On the right I have a Philips GU10 LED lamp rated 2 watts and drawing 1.9 watts. On the left I have a Chinese eBay special LED GU10-ish lamp, and I'll go about the ish later, uh, which is rated 3 watts apparently, I think it was, uh, can, you know, just as they usually do, but actually draws 1.9 watts, so drawing exactly the same power, but look at the intensity. I'll turn the light off and you'll see that really this is so much brighter, dramatically brighter than this one, which is kind of a shame for a start. It kind of suggests that if the power is being dissipated in the LEDs, then these LEDs are pretty shit in this Chinese one. But anyway, let's uh, take a further look at these. First thing to note is that the Philips GU10 lamp is pretty much the same size as a GU10. And it goes into this particular holder easily, because this is one of these uh, holders. It's designed to take a glass shade, and the socket is actually fixed at a distance at the back, and you put it in, and it makes good... It fits well, you know, it's designed for the actual industry standard GU10 holder. However, if I can get this out, because it scrunched up the ceramic last time, this one is not easy to get out and actually crack the ceramic in there because when you compare it side by side, it's really short. It's really a lot shorter than a normal GU10. And the reason for this, I couldn't work it out, I thought maybe they're just saving space, but I suddenly realised that this is a universal housing they've used. It's designed to accommodate uh, GU10 and MR16 style lamps with the two pins. And when you compare it to the um, standard um, MR16 lamp, then the, the depth is exactly the same to the back. So they've based it on the MR16 lamp, but given the option of using GU10 holders. Now, the front lens, and it's got a lens in the front, which is good, is glued in. I mean, it's quite an attractive lamp for the fact it's quite short. So let's uh, bang that out, because I pulled it out earlier. I did record this before, and uh, it kind of messed up. It filled, the iPad decided it was upside down, and it filmed it all upside down, and I drew the circuit diagram out. So, um, yes. But anyway... The circuit board is held in by two clips. This, I drew the circuit diagram now, it was upside down, it wasn't that helpful. I just thought it's easier just to record this again. So, if I pull the circuit board out, it's actually a fairly neat construction. It's that cheap circuit board material, it really is. It's that resin bonded paper stuff. But what is interesting is the little uh, capacitive dropper inside is quite neat. It's actually a different arrangement from normal, from the other ones, and it's quite compact. And the circuit, which I drew out earlier, uh, is very simple. It's got the 390 uh, nanofarad capacitor here, with a 680k discharge resistor. The discrete bridge rectifier, I'll just fold these up and show you it. Uh, then the 2.2 microfarad, which is an unusually low value for that capacitor, for the capacitance, but good enough. Uh, capacitor, 400 volt, uh, with another 680k discharge resistor across it, and then on the output, the quite hard to read blue metal film resistor with 680 ohm, feeding 24 LEDs, uh, surface mount LEDs. And I'm guessing that ultimately the, the only real factor to the dimness of this LED lamp is the fact that these are just generic LEDs. They're not good quality, they're not high output ones, they're just what they could get cheapest probably. But the design itself, it's got that little hole in the middle, I'm not sure what that's for. And another one over there, which uh, that might have been some, it might have been based on another circuit board that had them going spiral from the middle, maybe that was where the cable came through and sold on the top, I'm not really sure. But Either way, the, the little module here, the little power supply module, is quite compact, although well laid out. And it goes into the back of this housing, which has good ventilation slots. And the circuit board itself then clips in, and maybe those little holes will help a little bit of air circulate. Um, but the main thing is that, you know, it's going to dissipate the heat quite well, and it just kind of clips into two little lips there. And you can make it easier by squeezing the fitting as you do that. And then it does have the frosted lens that goes in the front, which probably attenuates a lot of the light, to be honest. Um, although it still wasn't that bright with it, with it out. But um, at least it was glued in, and 
It's quite an odd little lamp. It won't work in all lamp holders. It won't really work well in the ones that the lamp holders at the fixed distance for a GU10. But um, it will work uh, where you've got the down lighters that you take the little spring clip out, drop the lamp down on the socket, uh, undo it, put the new lamp into the socket and then push the whole loose socket up and put the spring clip in again. So it would work well there, but uh, it's, a, it's an odd lamp. It's quite a pleasing lamp in a way. It's just a shame it's a bit of a cheap and tacky lamp, but that's okay. I'm sure things will improve over time, but yes, yeah, it's, it's another novelty to add to the collection.